Hi, welcome to another maths video. Uh, today we're going to have a look at the basic index rules. We're going to have a look at multiplying by indices, dividing by indices, um, indices of, um, of zero, uh, as well as indices raised to another indice. Uh, if you want to pause the video now, take down the important notes, as well as uh, what I've got on the board at the moment, and then once you've done that, we can continue. All right, so I'm assuming you've done that now, uh, we're going to continue. So I want to have a look at first what I've written on the board here. It's good to get your terminology correct straight off the bat. So if I write 2 to the power of 4, firstly that's how I say that, 2 to the power of 4. 2 is my base and the 4 is what I call the index. Now index is singular form of indices. So indice, plural, index, singular. There are loads of names for this. Um, you've got your radicals. So uh, in America they're called radicals. And they're also known as powers uh, and orders as well. So that would be 2 uh, to the order of 4. You can say it like that. Um, however, in your GCC you will see them written as index or indices. So firstly, what does this actually mean? Well, 2 to the power of 4 just like when we had timesing, you had 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 would be 2 times whatever. We talk of indices as repeated multiplication. So timesing is repeated addition. Indices um, are repeated multiplication. Now I've drawn over here this little thing here. 2 to the power of 4 is equal to 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. 2, to its, two times itself 4 times. It is not equal to 2 times 4. I can't tell you how many times I see that. It's awful. It'll lose you marks. And it's kind of like when you say uh, that you don't believe in fairies. Every time you say that, a fairy dies. Every time you do something like that, and you treat that as though it's just multiplying, you kill a mathematician. Somewhere, I don't know, somewhere in the world, a mathematician dies. Every time you do that, okay? And that might be a good thing for you. You might not like it that much. But it's a bad thing, right? Don't do this. It's dreadful. Right, so, rant over. <clears throat> we have a look at our first set of problems. I write out um, 2 to the power of 3. So that's 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. So that's 2 to the power of 3. Times by 2 to the power of 4. Which is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. Now, as we said, indices are simply repeated addition. So, 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. How many 2's do I actually have there? Well, I've got 3 and I've got 4, which gives me 7 2's. So, I can write that as 2 to the power of 7. And what I've actually done is, is I've just identified the fact that because that's a 3 and that's a 4, a shortcut would be 2 to the power of 3 plus 4, which obviously gives us 2 to the power of 7 over there. I can do the exact same thing with algebra. Okay, it works exactly the same way. Let's say I have, let's say I have a squared, or a to the power of 2, times by <clears throat> a to the power of 4. So that's a times a, times by a times a times a times a. So in total here, I've got 6 a's. It was a times itself 6 times. And the shortcut again would have simply been 2 plus 4, giving me again a to the 6. I would always write this in the format a to the 6, try to simplify my indices as much as possible. Now, um, it should be noted here that it doesn't matter um, what that letter is, but what is important is that that is the same. My base number is the same. So when I multiply indices with the same base, I can simply add the indices together, okay? add each individual index together. Right, so that is multiplying it. That's where we get this rule from. a to the p times a to the q is simply a to the p plus q. So I'm just adding those two together. <clears throat> okay, moving on to my second index law. Index law number two, and that governs division. Before I get started on this, I just want to make sure that we understand if I have two over two, that's simply two divided by two, and I can write that as one, simply because two divided by two. If I went like this, and instead of at the top I had 2 times 2, now we know that that is 2 times 2 is 4, 4 divided by 2 gives me 2. What I've actually done there, I can think of this as cancelling within the fraction. I can say, well, I'm going to divide the bottom by 2, giving me 1, and divide the top by 2, giving me 1. 2 times 1 is 2, 
2 over 1, I can just write as 2. Okay, so that's just basic fractions. Okay, harking back to basic fractions. But it's important that you know that because this index law kind of relies on that. So I'm going to have a look at, let's say, 6 to the power of 5 divided by 6 to the power of 2. Right, so 6 to the power of 5, that's 6 times 6 times 6 times 6 times 6 divided, putting in my fraction line, by 6 squared, which is 6 times 6. <coughs> All I'm doing here is I'm just going to cancel and cancel. Please note, it doesn't give you 0. When I divide a number by itself, it doesn't give me 0, it gives me 1. Okay, so that leaves me with a 1, that leaves me with a 1, that leaves me with a 1, that leaves me with a 1. And all I need to do here, I don't actually need to worry about the 1s because if I have something over 1, I can just write it as whatever my numerator is. So for example, 2 over 1, I can just write as 2. But in this case, what I've actually got left are 3 lots of 6. So it's 6 to the power of 3. And the shortcut there is 6 to the 5 minus 2. Okay, 6 to the 5 minus 2. And that's where we get our working uh, or our second index law. And if I were to apply this uh, to algebra, let's see if it works with algebra. Let's say I have f squared, or no, let's not just squared, let's do a big one, f to the power of 4 divided by f to the power of 2. That is f times f times f times f all over f times f. And again, I cancel them, cancel them, I'm left with 1s. f times f leaves me with f squared, and the shortcut here, f to the 4 minus 2. And some of you might be wondering, what's happened to those 1s? Okay, the 1s that we put in here. Well, 1 times 1 is 1, and 1 times f is just f. So that's the reason why I'm not actually worrying about them for now. Right. I have to put them in because when we work with negative indices, which I'll show you in another video, the fact that there's a 1 there is actually quite important. All right, so uh, just bear in mind that there is a 1 there, but in this case, it doesn't make any difference to the sum. Okay, our third index law, our third index law is a to the 0 equals 1. In other words, anything raised to the power of 0 is 1. And so what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to set up a sum where my answer is going to be a number to a zero. To zero. In fact, I'll work with algebra, so you can see it's going to be any number. Let's think of my second index law. Let's say I had two. Uh, oh, I said I'm going to use algebra. Let's say b to the power of three divided by b to the power of three. Now, for those of you who are looking at this carefully, anything divided by itself should give me one. Absolutely. However, if I were to apply this rule, that's b to the 3 minus 3. I should still get out 1. 3 minus 3 is 0, so b to the 0 is 1. If I were to expand this out, just to make sure that, we, that we're getting this, that's b times b times b, all over b times b times b. Cancel, 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 cancel. I'm left with 1 over 1 is 1. Okay, so that is my third index law, and I get the third index law from the second index law. My last index law, a power raised to a power. Let's start with uh, some numbers. So let's say I had 4 uh, to the power of 3, all raised to the power of 2. Now, what does that actually mean? Well, if I raise that to the power of 2, what it means is that there's two lots of whatever's in this bracket. So I could say that that is 4 to the power of 3 times 4 to the power of 3. And if you are kind of looking at that and being a little bit concerned, huh, what? If I had 2a squared, that would be 2a times 2a. All right, it's whatever's inside the bracket twice, multiplied by itself at least. And we're not, we're not having a look at that for now. <coughs> so. If I then look at that, that simply comes from my first index law. So here I can very quickly just go 4 to the power of 6. There's 4 to the power of 3 plus 3. If we have a look algebraically, let's say I had um, b to the power of 9 to the power of 3. Well, that would be b to the 9 times b to the 9 times b to the 9, which gives me b to the power of 27. 
And hopefully you've noticed pretty quickly that my shortcut for doing this, if I wanted to, instead of having to write it all out like that, I could simply say, well, that's 4 to the power of 3 times 2. So all I've done is I've multiplied those together. And in this case here, for sticking with my algebra, I could say, well, that's b to the power of 9 times 3. And again, all I've done is I've multiplied those together. So from here, if I have a to the power of p times a to the power, or raised to the power of, of q, it's going to be a to the power of p times q. Now, um, one thing that I want to draw your attention to is you sometimes uh, will get a mixture of things in here. So, for example, uh, similar to what I did over there, uh, let's say I had uh, 4a squared to the power of 2, actually let's change that to a cubed, you can say a to the power of 3 is a cubed, both are acceptable. Now, what's happening here is I've got to make sure that I apply my index to both the number and the letter, okay? Apply my index to both the number and the letter. So 4a cubed, 4 squared, and 4a cubed raised to the power of 2, 4 squared is 16, and a to the power of 3 raised to the power of 2 is going to be a to the power of 6, okay? <clears throat> While I'm on the topic of having numbers mixed in, if we think of an example um, of this, so let's say we had, uh, let's say 2, uh, b, to the power of 3 times 9b to the power of 4. Now with this one, we're kind of getting a little bit confused because I've gone and thrown in some coefficients of b cubed and coefficients of b to the 4. Coefficients, by the way, means just the number in front of the letter. However, if I rearrange this, and I can do so because there's a times sign in between there, if you just don't write them, if I rearrange this to 2 times 9, times b cubed times b to the 4, it makes my sum seem a little bit easier, because suddenly I can do 2 times 9. Fine, 18. b to the 3 times b to the 4, well I know that that's just going to be b to the power of 3 plus 4, which is b to the 7. Okay, so when you get examples, and this will work in division as well, if I had, um, I'll do a third example just to show you, if I had, um, <coughs> let's say, I don't know, 12a to the power of 3 divided by 4a to the power, and let's change that to a to the power of 5, divided by 4a squared. I can write that as 12 divided by 4. 12 divided by 4, very neatly, is 3. a to the power of 5 divided by a to the power of 2. I know I'm just going to subtract them, so that's a to the power of 3. All right, so again, I just treat my numbers separately and then I treat my um, respective bases separately. Okay, <clears throat> I hope that uh, has explained it a little bit uh, with the, using the four basic index rules. Uh, in the next video on index, on index rules, I'll have a look at negative indices as well as fractional indices. Uh, but until then, hopefully this will get you through your maths. Okay. Cheers.